right. We are live. Hello, everybody. It's Coach Christine, and I am here today with my friend, my author and speaker friend, who I connected with a couple years ago, actually. And then we reconnected recently um, as I offered my 21 day challenge to jumpstart your health and wellness journey. And I was so glad to have Deborah participate. And I invited her on today because I've just been so excited and happy for her journey. Um, she's she's had an interesting journey and I'm sure she will share about that because I'm just going to kind of hand it over to her and let her share with you. But I will um, start off with Deborah. Can you just give us a, a brief introduction and say hello to everybody before we get started? Hey, <laughs> it's good to be here, Christine. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I, like you said, we've known each other for a couple of years because of our writing and our speaking. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw the 21 day challenge, I thought I need to do that. Yeah, why did, why did you think you needed to do that? Where were you at at that time? Well, I was probably about <laughs> so many pounds overweight mm -hmm. and um also i have fibromyalgia and mm. through the years have been in extreme pain mm. and so i think you know just that combination i knew i needed to do something oh that's interesting i'm glad you brought up the fibromyalgia and that you'll share a little bit about that because i personally don't have any autoimmune disorders but um, I 100% I believe in all the women that I've seen go through this, this similar journey that you're on right now. I, I truly believe that ditching carbohydrates and sugar, um, a lot of that, you know, going low carb has really helped a lot of people with that. So can you um, tell us a little bit about like what your pain level used to be and then what kind of process you went through as far as food elimination and where you're at now, what you've been doing. Okay, when I when I first got in the 21 day challenge and um, we talked about what all we'd have to give up, the sugar and <laughs> um, the carbs. And now I had quit drinking diet sodas because I had, uh, drink diet sodas for years and people had told me that it was bad for fibromyalgia mm. but you know I if I quit I quit a day you know and didn't really give it long enough to to uh, do its thing and so I thought well okay I quit drinking sodas but I just went straight to sweet tea mm. so sweet tea is pretty much all I drink um I have never liked water. The only water I, I would drink was out of the hose when we were outside playing and then we were so hot, we wanted something to drink. So, wow. <laughs> but just to go in and get water, I, I, I just never have liked it. Mm -hmm. And um, so and on those 21 days, um, I kind of went slow. And I guess one of the first things I, I tried to give up was the sugar. Mm -hmm. And I was also a snacker. So I was trying to uh, not snack in between meals. Mm -hmm. And also at night, uh, I have had this terrible habit. And it started when years and years ago in my late 20s, when they said I had low blood sugar. And I would get these spells and they said, well, the best thing for you to do is just eat small meals throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So I was eating pretty much all day and mm -hmm. that did great until I hit about 50 and mm -hmm. then it, it didn't work for me anymore, but I would even get up in the middle of the night and if I couldn't sleep, well, I would just get a snack, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me. And uh, so that was a horrible habit. Yeah. And that was probably the hardest thing to break was getting up, uh, laying in bed when I woke up and knowing that I would have to make myself go back to sleep without getting up. Yeah. And that was hard. We talked a lot about that habit of yours about getting up at night. And I was like, Deborah, just go back to sleep. You know? <laughs> and I was so surprised that you would actually get out of bed to go get something from the kitchen. But um, so I'm, I'm so glad that you've, you've made great progress on that. And 
to, to tell me, do you think like when I started the 21 day challenge with you, I, I got a sense from you that you thought there's no way I could ever give up sugar. There's no way, but, but what, is there something that really resonated with you that you thought, you know, if I do give up sugar, maybe my pain and my fibromyalgia flares would get a little better and I'd feel better day to day. I actually did not correlate those two. Okay. okay. Mine was more the weight thing mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, as you re recall, I knew I was going to have total knee replacement. Mm -hmm. And I was so concerned about being thrown off mm -hmm. after I had the replacement because uh, they are pretty tough surgeries. Yes. And I had made some progress. I hadn't lost a lot of weight or anything, but I had made some progress. And I was, I think I was making it like eight hours at night, you know, without getting up to eat and um, trying to do some of those things. And I was really excited. And the funny thing about it was my husband started pretty much the same thing, the same time I did. And we had not even talked to each other about it. So that was, he was taking, uh, three pills a day for diabetes. He's on no pills. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Uh, yeah. But he got that little sidetrack I had after my knee surgery, he got to keep going. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got way off track, believe me. And um, I had to have a lot of antibiotics and yeah. it made my taste. I didn't want anything but sweets, naturally. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't crave broccoli. I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> just chicken soup broth or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, that would have been great, but no, no, that was I, not I what I was craving. I mean, I know you had a serious surgery, and I know that we talked about it before you went into the surgery, and you were afraid that you were going to get way off track. But I wouldn't say you got way off track because it was always in in the back of your mind that you were going to yeah. right back. You were going to get right back to where you were um, after you, you know, got through this painful recovery part of your, of your surgery. So I was, I was super excited to, when you reached back out and said, okay, I'm ready. It's time Let's do this. I'm ready. I'm, and, and by then you had done the 21, you did the 21 days with us. Mm -hmm. the first, and then uh, you were doing really well. And then you had the surgery. Um, and so the time passed that you weren't able to do the, the rest of the coffee and connection part of the 90 day challenge. Right. Right. So I reached out again, right as we were doing another chat, right as I was getting ready to start another one of those. And I'm like, well, just come back at, you know, the timing's perfect. So you took yeah. recovery time while we went through another 21 day challenge. And, and it was great to have you come back because I know you were ready to go. Um, so you've had a lot of uh, physical healing. Let's talk about the physical healing first and um, just share a little bit more about I, I'd love for you to share more about like the pain level and things like that. And, and why you think that is that your, your pain is, well, is got and my pain level at its worst and anybody with fibromyalgia will be able to relate is way past 10. Oh. You know, you can't even describe it and it's a pain that is not normal. So mm -hmm. you can't describe it, it you know, and um, I've always been one to go on and do things. One thing I had to, I, well, I didn't have to, I wanted to. I had a, a daughter with special needs. And I think that probably kept me getting up and doing things even through the pain. Mm -hmm. um, but about three years ago, I actually had um, some, it was really minor surgery on my nasal passage. And the surgery went great. It was successful. Everything was fine, but it flared up fibromyalgia in my face. Wow. Now, just imagine trying not to move a muscle in your face. It was mm. excruciating. And um, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> and that probably lasted, um, I don't know, it probably took almost a year for that to get better. Wow. And that's what happens, it, it waxes and wanes and you never know what's gonna flare it up. Mm -hmm. So my level has been, through the charts at times. Yeah. So wow. I know how bad I can feel. Yeah. So um, now, now what's it like? I can imagine that um, the stress 
probably makes it flare. And then also probably your diet, what you're eating. So what do you think has changed to help the pain? Well, after my, can I, let me back up just a little bit with the knee surgery. Okay. The knee surgery was extremely painful. Uh, I got an infection, cellulitis, and the pain was excruciating once again in my uh, leg and my knee. And so I was dealing with that. And I, I was going to uh, physical therapy and probably after a couple months, things started getting a little bit better and I began to feel better. And the pain level was going down, the cellulitis was going away and I started walking and I walked maybe 10 minutes, you know, and I did that a couple of times and I was so excited. I thought, oh, this is wonderful, you know. Well, I guess I got a little cocky because I went to the mall the next day and I fell on the curb. Don't ask me how I fell on the curb. Oh, yeah. But right on my, well, fortunately, it was on my good knee. I was aware of uh, enough to fall on that good knee, but that threw me off and it jarred my body. So it flared up the fibromyalgia again. And so then I think it was probably about a week, but I went ahead and we started the 90, we had started the 90 day thing. Mm -hmm. And I started drinking water and I got, one thing that helped me with the water was uh, the infuser. And so I make my own fruit water okay. and now I don't drink anything but water. Yeah. But, Amazing. And, and I crave water. Yeah. I mean, we went to uh, Cincinnati about three weeks ago and you know, when you're on vacation, it's hard to keep track on track. And I drank a lot of sodas mm -hmm. and boy, you know, when I came back, you know, when I, when I started feeling better, when I started drinking the water, I stopped snacking. Um, I tried to do really low on the carbs and those were the biggest things. And I started walking and I now have gotten up to 45 minutes to an hour uh, awesome. when I walk, uh, but I had already started feeling, I was feeling so much better. And it was like, this must be what it feels like for normal people that to don't not yeah. be in pain not time. be in pain yeah. and so when I went to Cincinnati and I was thinking then you know I I can't say a hundred percent sure it was the diet change but I know through my uh experience that would be awful coincidental yeah and <laughs> so when I went to when I went to Cincinnati and I drank I drank a lot of sodas and when I got back I I was in bad shape and Did I had a, had a real bad headache and I didn't feel yeah. like doing anything and I got right back on my water right back where I was and I'd say within a week uh, I was back to where I was that's good so you got back on track yeah. so can you um I I would say that you said you can't say for certain it was dietary changes, but I'm going to say that I know that your body's less inflamed now that you are eliminating sugar, right? right. So I, I'm going to agree with that and say that. And then also when you were in Cincinnati and you were drinking soda, I'm just wondering, did you, did you hear my little voice in your head saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm thinking, okay, when I got back and I got on my water and got back in my routine and started feeling better, then I got back to walking. Uh, yeah. I was doing my hour walk and I yeah. thought, this is not coincidental. Yeah. And, uh, so that's when the light bulb went on. Yeah. And one, before we move on to like your, uh, the um, emotional and spiritual part of what I love to incorporate into our journeys too. Um, I'm just super excited about your weight loss too, because you, you didn't, you haven't been, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't lived in obesity and you really didn't have a, a tremendous amount of weight to lose compared to a lot of people like, like me, but your determination to get that extra weight off and to, it just helped you feel better. Right. I mean, do you want to share what, what, what your results were there? Well, I could stand up and show you, I've got on, uh, my older jeans that are a size smaller than what I had been wearing. Okay. 
So, you know, I can tell cool. in just yeah. that. And um, I have a lot of stomach issues and um, the bloating is pretty much gone. You know, I don't feel that bloatiness and yes. it, I, it don't, I don't have it. You know, you can actually see when you're bloated. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So, so that's been, you know, that's been better. And uh, now I've been fluctuating on my weight, but it's between 12 and 15 pounds I've lost. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's great. And do you still have more weight that you'd like to lose? Yeah. My goal was 20. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to keep, you're going to keep plugging along. So, because, you know, like we, the idea behind the 21 day challenge is the 21 days helps you get started. And I liked how you said, when we first started talking here today, that you started slow and I started mm-hmm. slow too. And I really, you know, have a lot of admiration for people that can jump in on day one and completely give up every, every crappy food that they eat, you know, on day one. But like, I made a choice to start giving up things slowly and you made that choice too. And, and I remember encouraging you along and, and saying, um, okay, now let's, what about the oatmeal? Is there something you could do with the oatmeal? <laughs> you can, what can you replace the oatmeal with, right? Because the oatmeal is completely sugar. So, so I'm so, I'm super excited for all your, your physical changes, mostly um, because you're not living in chronic pain every day now. So it's that, that is yeah. super Yes, because living in chronic pain that had that just has to be not not only physically draining but emotionally draining and spiritually too. It just leaves you in, in a dry place and in a part in mm-hmm. that. So, so part of a, a huge part of my journey of healing too was the emotional and the spiritual aspect. Um, I finally realized that God, you know, is for us in our health and wellness. The scriptures are full. Uh, full of, of encouraging um, instruction for us, you know, on how to live healthy. And, and I also love how relatable Jesus is to us and, and women who need to go through a dramatic weight loss transformation, like I did, um, you know, one of our biggest battles is temptation and constantly turning to food to fill our souls. And I was craving all the wrong things. And so I would just, you know, that's a little bit of my story, but do you have anything significant that you have learned through this process and how you feel different emotionally? Um, and is your spiritual walk with Jesus? Is it, is it connected on a, a deeper level or a different understanding of what he has for us for our health and wellness? I think a different understanding Mm-hmm. Um, and I've told you so, this several times, but one thing that you said that really resonated with me and probably just changed my whole thinking, ah, I'm getting tears in my eyes thinking about it. I know it's emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you said food is fuel. Mm-hmm. Our food is our fuel. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't using it for fuel. I was using it for a crutch, you know. And I know a lot of us do. That's the kind of way we are in the U.S. Yes. But that made a big difference. And some of the verses that you have used uh, have really resonated with me. And I love those. And Mm -hmm. I like to dig deeper and learn more. So that's been great. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's awesome. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that because I feel like, I didn't finally find healing physically until I got the emotional and spiritual part connected in as well, you know, and I, and I fully believe that God made us, created us that way uniquely body, mind, and spirit. You know, we all, it all works together. And if one's not healthy, I tried in my own power for so many years, 30 years to be physically healthy Mm -hmm. while ignoring completely ignoring why was I eating? Why was I making food an idol in my life? You know, why was I completely, why was I just trying to food? And so through this whole journey, um, you know, it's, it's been amazing. And I I love knowing like from Luke chapter two and and verse 40 and verse 52, those are two of my favorite verses in scripture, because they talk about how Jesus as a man on earth, fully God, fully man, he grew in stature and he, he became wise, you know, and it was all about his body, mind and spiritual growth. And that just, to me, that just is something special that we can know. Those of us that are in a journey like this, um, 
in a healing life transforming journey that we know we have a savior who is for us and he wants us to be full and healthy and well so that we can serve him better. And that's the whole purpose of why I'm here on zoom today. With you. <laughs> just love, I just love spending time with, with you women and um, connecting. And if I could connect personally with all of you, you know, over a cup of coffee, which is like one of my favorite things to do. So if we have to do it, on zoom, so be it, but <laughs> Well, that's one thing about your program, uh, Christine, is that you start off with all three mm -hmm. um, factions of it. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you had that when you started, but to me, that's such an advantage to have that when you start. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, the spiritual and the emotional healing came along very quickly for me. I would say like within the first couple of weeks, um, because I was at a point where I cried out to God for healing. Like he was, I was feeling so sick and I was like, well, you know, I know this savior. I know that he's a God who heals. So I might as well, you know, try him this time <laughs> and see what happens. Um, Cause you know, at that time I was living as a casual Christian, just, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church every once in a while, you know, things like that. But so very quickly, um, when my body switched into, you know, having more energy, sleeping better, having more energy, he, he started waking me up at five o'clock in the morning. And that's when I started spending time in the word. So I've I'm been spending, you mentioned that because yeah. I'm getting up at five 30 and six in the morning too. <laughs> Never. <laughs> never and I'm a napper I was taking naps and I can I can go all day now and I'm actually been able to write uh I'm just about finished up with a book that I was working on that I couldn't make myself you know get down to that's and, awesome uh, yeah so I mean it's just it's just I don't know it's just well let me tell you this I went to the when I had my surgery um and I was, I was in the hospital a week with the infection and with knee replacements, sometimes if you get infections, they have to take your knee out. And sometimes it heals and sometimes it doesn't heal. And, you know, sometimes I can't put it back in. And so I'm laying there not knowing whether I'm going to have a knee or not. So I go from that to when I went to the doctor yesterday for my four months checkup, the PA said, I have never seen you look so vibrant <laughs> and you know it was just it, it was amazing it was amazing for yeah. them to see the transformation and they were they were really good they stood by me and I said don't ever underestimate um the will of a person that wants to get better oh you know, so that is, that's awesome. That's an awesome piece of advice for anybody that's listening right now. So, and that truly, yeah. And it, it all comes down to like, we talk about body, mind, and spirit, but it's all like a heart transformation, you know, like God is working on our hearts. Um, he's trying to reach us and he sees our hearts. Um, and so getting to that point of making that first choice, that's like, that's how we start off the 21 day challenge is we talk about choices. And anybody that signs up for the 21 day challenge, there's something in them internally that has them there. You know, like there's something mm -hmm. all, intrinsically, we all have something, there's something going on inside of us that we know that we're not taking our health and wellness seriously and that we, you know, we, we need to do better. And so that's why I'd like to start with making choices and that's hopefully that the choices that we make lead us on to a you know, um, a healing journey like you're on right now. And I'm so excited for you. And I, I, that's why I wanted to have you on to talk. Cause I was just, yeah, like the pain thing is, is huge. And when your doctor, or your PA told you that yesterday that you were vibrant, I mean, that puts a tear in my eye now <laughs> <laughs> having them say that to you. I like to say, you know, you walked, you're walking in victory. And then that vibrant word that was like, wow, that's real. That's a really great word. I yeah, know. it kind of. Yeah, he says I, I've never seen you look like this, and no. uh, you know I had not told him I was doing anything different. He brought it up first. Did you tell him that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. cool. 
That's I awesome. what I was doing that what I was doing different. And that is awesome. Very good. Well, I, I, I'm sure we're going to stay connected and you're going to finish up that book too. And um, I will be posting this and, and introducing you as my author and speaker friend too. So people can go and connect with you. Do you have a, uh, you have a website. Why don't you tell us your website name and I'll put it in the comments later too. Well, I can get the address is www.deborah malonecom it's just my name okay. with a dash in it. Never dash malonecom Okay. And then do you have an author and speaker Facebook page too? Or are you just on Facebook? I'm and just on Facebook and I, you know, I would just welcome anybody that wants to connect. Yeah. I tried just, the author, the author page thing, but it was just, I don't know. I was getting more contacts on my regular page. Yeah. So instead of trying to keep up two. I just kind of yeah. put them together because I don't yeah. do a lot of personal stuff. Yeah. And uh, it worked out. That's good. That's good. So if anybody wants to connect with Deborah, Deborah Malone.com. And um, just say the name of your book too, the title of your book, and a little, just a little snippet about that. Uh, well, I do happen to actually have a copy right here. <laughs> Blooming and Broken Place. And it's Blooming. an winning book too. Yes, um, blooming in broken places, and it's a it's a story of my life. But I wove it between women from the Bible that had mm -hmm. gone through challenges, yes. and I wanted to show how God can use us even in our darkest times. You know, mm -hmm. He can still use us. Mm -hmm. And I just got through working on the Samaritan woman at the well, and that just oh man. It's amazing. It's one of my favorites. And Esther, too. I mm -hmm. like Esther. But, um, you know, their cultures were different, but their feelings and their wants and their needs were the very same as we have today. And so mm -hmm. to go back and study them, there's a lot that we can learn from them. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. Well, we'll I'll put the I'll put your link below in the comments and then. Um, you make sure to share this on your Facebook page too. And um, I will be uh, opening the next registration cart for the October 4th, 21 day challenge. I'll be opening the cart for that next Monday on the 27th. So if anybody's interested in jumping on the 21 day challenge that starts October 4th, I look forward to hosting you and getting to know you as well over coffee and connecting, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Deborah, for joining me today. It has been really Thank awesome. you for having me. I appreciate it. I love your testimony. Um, and I'm going to be sharing this um, so everybody can hear it. All right. Right. And they right. need to uh, just come and jump on your train for the 21 day. Um, yes. To see, even if just to see what's going on, to see yeah. what it's yeah. about. Right. And, and that's why I made it a low cost a low cost offer too, because I want, um, I want people to start somewhere, you know? Yeah. And like that I, helped. Yeah. It definitely, you know, come on, let's do this together. I'm here for you. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. So, <laughs> all right, take care. I'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Bye.